a powerful lumen occluding giant contraction originates at the proximal colon. This forces large quantities of digester towards the colonic coil. You can see that despite a marked relaxation, the intestinal loops of the coil have a relatively small diameter and thus a limited capacity. It's therefore likely that there's a control mechanism regulating the flow of digester into the coil. The wave propagates along several centripetal loops. Additional peristaltic waves originate in the colonic coil. Again, a forceful contraction starts at the proximal colon, pushing large volumes of digester aborally. Towards the colonic coil, the constriction of the wave is reduced and parts of the digester flow backwards. Thus, the volume entering the coil is diminished and adapted to the smaller capacity of the loops of the coil. Within the coil, the constrictions of the peristaltic waves are low. This ensures that the loops remain filled with chyme and the additional digester are distributed over several loops of the coil. The wave now reaches the flexure of the coil and continues along the centrifugal loops. When the wave has passed a spiral loop, segmenting contractions recur, dividing the digester into small boli. In the following video clip, the modulation of the colonic wave can be seen on both the fluoroscopic picture and the motility tracings. A peristaltic wave starts at the proximal colon and becomes a giant contraction, completely occluding the lumen. However, spreading over a short distance, the constriction is reduced and thus chyme flows retrograde. Thus, only a small quantity of the chyme is propelled into the colonic coil. The motility tracings show that the wave starts as a regular peristaltic wave, becomes a giant contraction, and is then reduced to a peristaltic wave. Due to this modulation of the colonic waves, only small quantities of digester have entered the spiral colon. A further wave starts at the proximal colon. This becomes a lumen occluding giant contraction propelling large volumes of digester towards the coil. Just in time, however, the control system obviously recognizes that the volume would be too large for the coil. Thus, the giant contraction is reduced to a peristaltic wave and the volume pushed to the coil is diminished. The giant contraction can be clearly identified on the motility tracings. At the distal recording site, the giant contraction becomes a peristaltic wave. The peristaltic wave propagates along the centripetal loops of the coil. These observations indicate that the force of the colonic contractions is controlled and the volume entering the colonic coil is adapted to its capacity.